So what you see over here is um, a video from, uh, from our cameras. Uh, these are, of course, color videos, which have been color processed uh, uh, from, from a variety of cameras. Uh, we don't have all the cameras over here. Uh, the reason uh, you see a duplication of these two on the left and uh, uh, the, the other two top on the right is because it makes it very confusing if all the cameras were available. But it gives you a very good sense of what is captured around the car and what can be perceived uh, with that capture. Uh, if you look at the video in the center, the video in the center comes from uh, the main camera. The main camera is a camera that's pretty much does the um, it's, it's, it's the working horse, it does, it, it, it does the heavy lifting, it is the one that looks ahead. Uh, 52 degrees horizontal field of view, typical uh, distance we can expect is about 100 to 150 meters, being able to see lane lines. Um, there's another camera, uh, which is not here, uh, which is the narrow camera, and that can see further, even further beyond the, what the main camera can see. Uh, it can see probably 250 meters, uh, and the good thing about this narrow camera is that if they are road hazards uh, very far away, uh, those can be detected uh, early enough. Uh, in addition to the main and the narrow camera, of course, there is a fisheye camera. And you can see the fisheye camera. It is the top center. And the fisheye camera's primary purpose is uh, for cars that very quickly come in and cut in uh, for ensuring that if there are pedestrians walking from the left, walking from the right, they can be detected. Cyclists, uh, same thing. Uh, when you're taking sharp turns, turn left or turn right, you want to exactly see if there are any moving objects uh, that, uh, that may have not been noticed. Uh, there are two cameras, of course, looking forward from the side of the vehicle. And these are cameras which uh, are called uh, left side forward, right side forward. Again, these extend the visual field of view that we are capturing. You can see this clearly overlap between the cameras. Uh, the cameras themselves are generally hovering around uh, 30 to 60 frames a second. And I'll talk more about how we, um, how we uh, deliberately vary the frame rate and the resolution. I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, the, there is, of course, the rear camera looking completely behind. That's at the bottom center. And uh, that basically gives you an idea of what's the intention of the vehicle behind. Uh, looking at the turn signals of the vehicle behind, knowing very well that if you turn in the same direction as the vehicle behind, you are more, uh, more what I mean, you, there, there may be a risky maneuver there. Um, and then, of course, there are rear facing cameras, but towards the back. And that additionally covers uh, all the spaces around the car. Uh, there are barely any blind spots. They are there, but very close to the vehicle, which we can actually measure and monitor uh, with ultrasonic sensors and, of course, uh, what we call uh, surround view cameras. So what you see over here is what we call the key X-Pilot cameras. Uh, there's another set of four cameras that you don't see over here, uh, which are meant for self-parking purposes that are intended for very close proximity objects. Um, and that gives us the comfort that what's around the car will be noticed. Uh, if we go to the next slide here, um, clearly there is a challenge that we face, uh, even with the cameras. Uh, the camera, of course, is an an incredibly useful sensor for us. It plays a central low role in, in perception. Uh, we are taking advantage of the fact that it mimics pretty much what the human eye and um, uh, brain end up perceiving. It's following that same path. Uh, but there are some challenges. And uh, as humans, we, we, we notice those challenges. Uh, you may be driving on a highway, the sun may be directly in your, in your sight, um, giving you a lot of glare, the camera will have the exact same issue. 
And uh, we'll have to tackle these very, very carefully as we move forward. These are very, very difficult challenges to tackle. You can abate some of them. You may not be able to remove them entirely. Uh, reducing flare is a very critical part, to a critical task for us, working very closely with the camera with the lens manufacturers and making sure that uh, uh, not only flare, but ghosting is also very carefully uh, uh, at least abated. We may not be able to remove them completely. Uh, there are clearly going to be select weather conditions where we may not be able to deploy the complete uh, self-driving feature that we want. Extreme weather conditions where you may be uh, facing a thunderstorm uh, where your visibility is completely uh, uh, affected. So these are basically challenges from the sensing and perception side. Uh, there are definitely challenges we have on the mapping side as well. Uh, we have a very simple architecture with respect to mapping. Uh, we use uh, uh, GNSS and IMU, and, uh, and I'll talk more about that, how we go about that. It's a very simple architecture that actually does not even use uh, SLAM at this point in time. We are not using visual odometry. We are keeping it very simple. We are keeping it very robust. Uh, there will be challenges, of course, from geofenced areas where we may have to basically bound that if this is an area where there is a lot of uh, school traffic, uh, we may have to be extremely careful in scenarios of that kind. Uh, then there are, of course, the driving policy challenges. Uh, I mean, we may, need, we may limit the vehicle or uh, the X-Pilot system uh, within certain speed ranges. Uh, so the operability of that X-Pilot system would be within certain bounding boxes, which we need to know very clearly what those are and know well that it can operate within that bounding box, box that we have identified for that, for it. And of course, the last one is, of course, road, road and traffic conditions. There are a variety of different uh, uh, behavioral challenges that you have. You may have a vehicle coming in in front of you and you have to guess what the intention of the driver is and in that case uh, it may be difficult to make a call exactly what the intention of the driver is if you are say for instance taking a left. Um, uh, so there are certain cases where we may have to limit uh, what the X-Pilot system does but either way we'll, we'll basically scope it out clearly know what the bounding limitations are and work within them. Uh, the vehicle itself so what you see here is our current vehicle, the vehicle that you have downstairs. This is basically the G3 vehicle. This vehicle uh, is selling right now. It's, um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a vehicle that uh, uh, is as you see it over there. Uh, on top of this vehicle, because we can't show you our next generation vehicle uh, yet, uh, what we have done is we've put in arrows pointing what are the different sensors on the next generation vehicle. So just bear in mind that the red vehicle you see here in the center is just a placeholder. It should have actually been replaced by our new E28 vehicle, which is uh, scheduled for start of production Q1 2020. So let's see what this vehicle, the E28 vehicle will have. Uh, we have a very generous amount of radars. We have a front radar, which will be able to see uh, 160 meters. Uh, its angular resolution is very differentiated from angular resolution of other radars. Uh, we have corner radars on all the four corners, front corners and rear corners. So a total of five radars. Uh, in addition to that, of course, we have um, the eight cameras that we talked about uh, that surround the car. And this is generally an industry trend. They have basically figured out that this is an optimal setup. Eight cameras can give you pretty good 360 degree coverage. And for the immediate surrounding uh, view, uh, we use the parking cameras, which is another four cameras. So eight plus four is 12. And then what we have in this uh, architecture is we have a completely independent autonomous emergency braking camera. Uh, so that makes it 13. And then we have another camera inside the car for driver state mon monitoring, and that makes it 14. So very rich from a standpoint of uh, camera sensors, giving rich media uh, to, the, uh, to, 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 to the NVIDIA processor here. Um, if you look at uh, the ultrasonics, it's the same standard ultrasonics 
uh, six ultrasonics at the front, six at the back. The ultrasonics at the corners, uh, four corners, are slightly different from the ultrasonics which are right in front and right behind. Um, and then, of course, uh, we do have uh, the um, uh, the trifocal camera at the front, which is behind the uh, rear view mirror. And this is a camera that has three uh, three cameras in one. And uh, this is where we very thoughtfully uh, uh, vary both the resolution and the frame rate. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about that in a moment. Uh, the rear camera itself, uh, we consider 30 frames a second as sufficient. Uh, to, to capture what's going on on the rear. Uh, the side rear facing camera uh, is one, and the side front facing camera uh, are one megapixels in this case. Uh, they give us enough resolution to see what's happening at this close proximity. So if you look at uh, what coverage we have from a sensory standpoint, this is essentially the same thing. A uh, narrow, narrow camera, of course, is going to be able to, uh, let me see if I can, yeah, so the, this is the narrow camera. So the narrow camera, of course, will give you distance, uh, much intended for road hazards, uh, a tire or a rim or something uh, right in the center of the road, which may need to be detected early. Uh, the main camera, of course, is the uh, workhorse of the whole system. And then, of course, we have a fisheye camera that provides, uh, uh, basically, uh, gives you the view of people who are cutting in and so on and so forth. Uh, system differentiators. Uh, what are our system differentiators? You can see that the industry is evolving and is evolving to a common set, uh, call it a common subset. Uh, what is the differentiation we add? Uh, one of the things we add here is we basically increase the frame rate drop down the resolution uh, for close proximity vehicles. So if you are driving, remember, the vehicles that we are designing are very much tailored for the China environment, where the driving conditions are more challenging than they are in the United States. Uh, uh, your um, uh, personal spaces are much less. People come very close to the car. Cut-ins are very common. Uh, we want to have a reaction time of about 16 milliseconds. So we up our frame rate, reduce our resolution because typically the vehicles are very close and react or respond to the situation that the cameras uh, uh, capture. And of course, if you are on a highway, not in an urban situation, but rather on a highway, then you have the benefit of uh, using high resolution cameras which is uh, basically the full resolution of the camera. And you can very conveniently drop the frame rate so that from a processing standpoint, it's not overly burdening your processing. Uh, the GNSS INS system, which is a very central part to our sensor infrastructure, is, uh, is very simple in our case. Uh, we try to keep it uh, free from uh, vision odometry in this case. Uh, we are basically saying use a good GPS or GNSS system, use a good IMU, uh, do very good fusion between them uh, so that you can reduce the SEP and get about 20 centimeters of absolute localization accuracy on a highway at two sigma, 95% of the cases. And uh, again, as I said, because this is a very China driven effort, uh, we have literally identified a route, we call it the Guangzhou Route 8. It's a 55 kilometer route in the city of Guangzhou. Um, it takes us about two and a half hours to drive that route. And uh, with laser focus, we are monitoring how this system performs in the real world. Uh, the radars I just mentioned, it's basically fifth generation radar technology. Angular resolution has come down to about three degrees. Uh, and uh, 160, 150, 160 meter range. Uh, these are radars that uh, in, in, in many cases will even detect stationary objects, uh, something that most radars have issue with. Uh, the radars on the side, of course, are a different 
a kind of radar, and the radar at the front is, uh, of course, um, the long-range radar. 